One of the questions I'm asked most about GarageBand here in iOS 11 is how the heck does the folder structure work here? What is on my device? What is on iCloud? How do I know what's shared and what's not? Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you a quick crash course into all things iOS 11 file management here in GarageBand. Let's go. In previous versions of iOS, iOS 10 and earlier, if you went into GarageBand, you would hit a big button that said create new project, you would create your project, it would save it to your iPhone or your iPad, and you would be good to go. If you wanted to then share it to iCloud or export it or do something else, you could choose to do that, but by default, everything was saved straight to your device. Now, iOS 11 came along with its new files app integration and it changed all of that. So a lot of folks are having challenges coming to terms with what that actually means and how to manage their files. So in this video, I'm going to show you the basics. If you wanna know everything, if you want an in-depth view, I've got a video that's about 40 minutes long and that goes into every single feature of the files app in detail. So I'll link that one above and below but if you just want to get up and running then this video is for you so here we are we are in our garage band app and over on the left here we've got all of these locations now these may look completely different for you but the things you have in common is you have iCloud Drive you have on my iPhone the all of the rest of these you can add in and again I go into details about how to do that and the key thing here is that the only places that you can natively store, which means that will actually work, are iCloud Drive and on my iPhone. Any other storage location you can copy and paste things to and you can uh, export your finished projects to, but the iOS environment only allows you to have your .band projects, so your GarageBand projects on iCloud Drive or on my iPhone. So keep that in mind mind when you are getting your folder structures set up and getting set up here in GarageBand. So the two key folder structures that we have here is the iCloud Drive and on my iPhone. Now iCloud Drive is probably the new one and the one that you're going to need to get used to because what happens in iCloud Drive is that we can actually create a new project here. If we tap create document, it will come in, we'll open a new project, we'll complete it, we'll save it, and it will save it to our iCloud Drive directly but it'll also be on this device. So I'll give you an example. So let's go into GarageBand for iOS. And if we grab this one here, so this string hook is on this device right now. All of these ones that have the little cloud down arrow means that they're on the cloud, but they're not on this device. Now, the reason for that is that what GarageBand does or what the Files app does is if you're running out of space and you've got some files here that it knows are in the cloud but they're also on your device, it will offload them, which means that it sends them away, well, it deletes them from your phone, but you know that you will have a backup version in the cloud. And as soon as you come back in here, we go, okay, I wanna get this file back. Then all you need to do is tap on the little cloud icon there and it will download your people want ducks because we all want ducks. And then as you see, it'll start downloading. You get a little progress indicator to show that it is downloading there. So here's one I prepared earlier, this string hook. So this is one that is on the device and is in the cloud as well. You can tell because it has no cloud icon there. If we open that one up, and we do some changes to anything, in fact, even if I don't change anything, uh, and then I go back to my songs, what you're gonna see is this other cloud icon. So that's the upload, it says waiting to upload. What it's doing now is it's going to wait and then it's gonna upload the latest changes. So it's gonna make sure that the version on the cloud matches the version on this device. And this means that if I now go to my iPad, because I'm on my iPhone here, and I've made some changes here, if I, if I go to this one, it'll say, yep, you need to download string hook because it will have some changes. So this is both very cool, but also a little bit frustrating in my view because it means you don't have control over whether you wanna share these across your devices or even upload them to your iCloud. And iCloud is only five gigabytes by default. You have to pay if you want more. So if you've got lots of larger projects like I do, then you're gonna quickly run out of storage space. So that is where on my iPhone or on my iPad comes into play. So this is like your OG, your old school, your original uh, way of storing files that we have here on our iPhone. So we've got our GarageBand folder here. We can tap on that. And here we can create our documents. So to create a new one, and then here are all of ours. And you'll notice these don't have any of our cloud icons or any of that caper. They all are just the standard files, which means that they are here, but they are only on this device. These are not 
not backed up anywhere to the cloud or otherwise. So we need to be really careful that if there's things in here that we want to make sure that we keep, that we have a backup copy of them. And I've showed you how to copy over to a PC using iTunes file sharing. You can also airdrop from one device to another, which is another really easy way to create a backup copy. I do that all the time. If I start a project on my iPhone, I can airdrop it over to my iPad. That's a very cool feature there to share. And yes, everything is all in here and good to go. The other thing you can obviously do is transfer a version of these over to your iCloud drive. So let's do that now. We'll come down, we'll find a small file here. How about this vinyl effect? Uh, this is a very cool one, by the way. Uh, another video, I'm not trying to cross promote my videos here, but this is a recent one where I showed how to do this cool record vinyl scratchy effect, uh, which is a very cool one. So we're gonna select this, we're gonna tap on there, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap the move, which is the third one, the little folder icon down the bottom here. It's gonna ask us where we would like to move this to. We're gonna say iCloud Drive, and we're gonna go down to GarageBand for iOS, and we're gonna tap copy and it's going to not actually move it, but copy it. So anytime you're going between, you're on my iPhone and your iCloud drive, it's going to actually do a copy as opposed to a move, which means you'll keep a copy on your on my iPhone and you'll also get a copy here in GarageBand for iOS. So we'll come over here. Here is our record vinyl effect and it is waiting to upload. So this is the other way that you can back up your file. So you've started a project, you're working on it here on my iPhone or on my iPad and you're like, okay, I, I like where it's at. I wanna make sure I've got a backup. All you need to do is do that, select, tap on your, your move or your copy there, copy it over to your iCloud Drive, and then when you come into your iCloud Drive and your GarageBand for iOS folder, then it will be in there. And at the moment it's waiting to upload. So as soon as that is done, it will turn like string hook is here. And then if I go to a different device, it will have the download option there. So I can download it. Plus there'll always be a copy of that in the cloud, which is cool. A couple of other quick things here and a quick pieces of advice. So the iCloud drive, you'll notice here that I've got projects outside of my GarageBand for iOS folder. Now I don't necessarily advise that, obviously I've made a bit of a mistake there. I do have other folders here that I use for my exporting and other things, which is fine, uh, but I do suggest that you keep everything, even though you can just hit create document there, I would always go into GarageBand for iOS and create your documents there because then you know that they're going to be shared. And a couple more quick pieces of advice. Now I covered this in my copying and backing up video that I made just recently that you can check out again in the links below and above, but Everything that's here on my iPhone and in this GarageBand folder, this is what will show up in iTunes file sharing. So when you go to your PC or your Mac in iTunes and go to GarageBand, you're gonna see all of these, including your GarageBand file transfer folder. And in that video, I mentioned that I don't use the GarageBand file transfer folder to store much because you have to transfer the entire folder. But that's another story. Check out the other video if you want to learn about that. But everything that's in here, you can then copy and back up. So if you want, again, to make a quick backup of everything that's here, even something that's on your iCloud drive, you can do the reverse. You can move it from iCloud drive over to on my iPhone or on my iPad, sync up your device with iTunes, copy it to your desktop or to a folder on your hard drive, and you are good to go. Our other locations here, so OneDrive, Dropbox, and Google Drive, and all of these others, wouldn't it be great to be able to use these? And it almost looks like you kind of can. You can hit Create Document on some of these and create a new GarageBand document. But again, I don't advise it because the file systems and the compatibility issues that I have had to date have meant that it's just not worth trying to do. If you do want to transfer a GarageBand project to Dropbox, Google Drive, or others, what I do suggest is using the Readle Documents app to zip it up or audio share or something like that, that you can create a zip file, and then you can actually transfer and, and put that into your Dropbox or your Google Drive. Then at the other end, you can do the reverse or whoever you're sending it to can do the reverse. The .band file structure, because it's like a folder in the Windows file structure, it doesn't actually work very well. It doesn't play nicely with a lot of file sharing because there's a lot of small files in that folder. So if you're going to transfer, zip them up. The other way to collaborate is to use iCloud Drive to collaborate. And once again, I have a video which I will link in the description below that you can check out how to directly collaborate with another user just within iCloud Drive. It's a very cool function. Check it out if you haven't already. And there you go. I hope this helps you get your files in order and understand where things are going here in GarageBand. If you've got comments, questions, or suggestions, you can leave those down below and I'll see you on the next video.
Hey, thanks for watching. We've got two more videos about managing your files here in GarageBand iOS down below. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking in the top right there on the Studio Live Today icon or head over to studiolivetoday.com for more audio goodness.